value. So that means once you've set a value, you can't change it. So you have to create a new value. So this uh, talks a lot about something called persistent data structures as opposed to what you're normally used to, which would be an ephemeral data structure. So let's say I have a linked list and I want to update something. Oh, this is where, uh, oh, no signal. Hmm. Oh well. I'll let him fiddle with that while I keep talking. Um, let's say you want to update the third element in a linked list. Normally in an ephemeral data structure, you would just go in, swap out the value, um, and move on. Uh, you can't do that whenever you're dealing with uh, immutable data. So what you have to do is you have to rewrite all of the list up to that third element. Um, Swift has two things uh, that make this pretty nice. It has value types, um, <laughs> and it has uh, copy on write semantics. So what you can do is you can keep passing these things around. Everything gets its own copy, and as soon as, oh, hey. System preferences <laughs> display mirror. I think I've got it up here. Yeah, and as soon as uh, you make a change to it, it will actually do the copy on the right. So as long as you're only passing these uh, value types around, you're good. The value types that Swift has are uh, going to be uh, enums, tuples, and structs. And you'll see a lot of uh, standard libraries and stuff moving to structs and away from classes and mutable data. So here is a very simple linked list implementation. Do not clone this from GitHub and use it in production. It is bad. Um, but either, the displays aren't mirrored, Nick. Arrangement. Okay. They're not, they're not mirrored. So here's the code. Um, essentially, a node can be one of two things. It can either be empty, um, or it can be, have a value and then have another list as the tail. So right here, uh, because in Swift, uh, value types normally go on the stack. You have to know the size ahead of time whenever you compile. So we're using an indirect enum, so that means you can have uh, recursive types, um, which is right down here, list of t, that's just a generic. Um, and then we have all the functional, or the <laughs> expected calls on a list like tail, so if uh, it's empty, we're gonna throw, because what is the tail of an empty list? It doesn't make any sense. Otherwise, we can do this uh, associated values with enum cases. Uh, enum in Swift is a lot like a tagged union, if you're familiar with some types. And we just return the tail. Um, on the head, we do the same thing, except we match on the element and we throw away the rest of the list. And then on an update, this is where we have to do a little bit of recursion to rewrite the entire list. Uh, if the index is zero and we're updating the value, we just have to uh, create a new node that has that new value and then we uh, attach the rest of the list. And if we uh, are not there, then we have to pretty much keep moving on into the list until, or recursing through the list until we find the element we're trying to update and uh, replace it. So we're essentially rewriting half of the list. The other nice thing about this is we've not ever touched the, uh, whatever the parent is, whatever One uses the, the uh, list before the update. Uh, still has its own copy of the data, so we don't have to worry about things like concurrency issues. All right, that's it. Thanks. Thanks, Nick.